Today we are in the beautiful Con Ken and I absolutely love this place. And in this video, we're going to explore the city and also its surrounding areas. Look at these places here, guys. This is incredible. Lots of things to see and do, and we will never do it justice. We will never see it all. We'd have to move here because it's that big and that varied. Loads to see and do. And so in this video, we're just gonna be highlighting the best of Con Ken, the coolest sites that were recommended to me by locals who are subscribed to this channel and live in this city, and who I met for beers and curries and told me, you must go here, you must go there before you go. And so, we're going to go to all of those places and you're invited, so let's go. Good morning. I've come to a place that you guys have recommended to me to visit because it's a coffee shop, but it is kind of like a wholesale place where they grow and grind and create their own coffee here. And they're busy, they're busy. Not only are they sending out coffees online on Food Panda for takeout, and also there's people here having a coffee, but there's like a warehouse behind me and they're grinding away all these beans and putting them into bags and you know sealing them professionally. And then you can buy them here on the shelf. But um, yeah, this is like an establishment, a very famous place in Thailand for very good coffee. And I didn't really fancy an espresso, so I've gone for something a little bit weird. It's a coconut coffee, okay? So you get fresh coconut water with big chunks of coconut flesh. And then they create a lovely double shot of espresso with a great creme pour it on the top and Bob's your uncle. There you go. Coconut <laughs> coffee. Never tried it like this. I've had the orange juice one before, but never had the coconut one. So what do you reckon? Even though it's diluted massively by the coconut water, it still comes through very bitter with the sweet coconut. That's a great little cocktail, that is. But I'm thinking about buying a bag of coffee here as a present for someone because it looks incredible and smells amazing in here. If you like the smell of coffee, these guys are busy grinding away. Oh, it smells amazing in here. Thank you for the recommendation. It's quite big and there's quite a lot of cool looking animals all around me already. So you pay 150 baht to come in and you get a free basket of like snacks for the animals. I've already been hounded by the geese. I don't know what they want because I've got hay and a pumpkin and a banana. So I don't think ducks eat that. But if I just sit down and gather my thoughts for a second, like here they come. Look, let's see what they eat. See, there's nothing in there for you. Is there something? Maybe they put seeds in the basket at the bottom. Let me have a look. Is there anything? No, it's just hay and stuff, guys. Would you like a banana? Have you, are you eating the pumpkin? They're going for it. <laughs> that, the guy, there's nothing in there for you, geesey boy. These look like those South American animals. The big gerbil thingies. Yeah. He loves the pumpkin. Hello, mate. <laughs> I love this geese. Wait, do you like the pumpkin? Oh, the geese likes the pumpkin.
but yeah this is nice nice kept grounds and they've kind of just got all the animals doing their thing just walking around and getting treats and scratches off the people who come there's nobody here except for me at the moment does that feel good does that feel good oh yeah on the chili chin 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 Sharp claws. But beautiful eyes. Beautiful eyes. Ow. Naughty. Okay, so we've made it to Ubol Ratanadam. Probably saying that wrong, that's quite difficult, but let's try that again together, ready? Ubol Ratanadam. Okay, it's not easy being a traveler in Thailand and being a foreign English speaker. And I get corrected in the comments every single time. <laughs> I do try my best, but obviously I'm nowhere near good enough. But uh, anyway, we're here now. This is a particularly beautiful place. So thank you for the recommendations. And actually, staying in Con Ken, like for the past few days, which I have been, everyone said, oh, you have to go up to the dam. You have to go up to the dam. So we've come to the dam and it, yeah, it's beautiful. And it's built in the 60s. So it's quite an old style dam, obviously. And it's one of the first ever hydroelectric power plants and power dams in Thailand ever built. I think it's the second one after the one in Tak, which we never really made it to because I was having a bad day that day. <laughs> and I'm a little bit worried about checking the oil situation with Dreamy. If you've been following along, my motorbike has been having quite severe oil leaks. However, yesterday I picked her up from the Honda shop and they really seemed to know what the problem was. They identified a couple of pieces of the engine that had been worn out and a rubber seal and some sort of other metal circle thing <laughs> and you could see especially the metal piece that had been worn out and the rubber piece was just in bits so he's replaced the rubber seal he couldn't find the piece um new or used so he's just kind of engineered it back together again and he said it should be okay and so far nipping around town i haven't seen any oil leaks but i've just done 75 kilometers so when we get back to the dreamy We'll check to see if she's leaking oil. Hopefully not, because you know, when you're driving a motorcycle that's dripping oil, it's, I don't know, it's like riding a bleeding horse. You're worried it's gonna get sick and die, and it's just not a nice feeling driving a bike, especially my bike, which I love dearly, dreamy, knowing that she's leaking and potentially gonna break. So anyway, let's fingers crossed that she's okay. I was reading online that I think either in 2016 or 2006, I'm not sure exactly, it ran dry, which is incredible if you think about it. It ran out of water and they must have had such a bad, terrible dry season because look at it. Imagine this lake being not here. <laughs> it's such a massive expanse of water. It's hard to believe really. And you can see with the stains on the rocks where it should be. So it should be a little bit higher, but you know, it hasn't rained for a few months up in this area. So I, yeah, I can imagine it's a bit, a bit low, but I can't imagine it being just completely barren. Very cool piece of engineering. I love these things, you know, especially these older designs. Everything's such, so much more analog you know, with the train track here, because I'm not even sure what this crane mechanism's for, but it's obviously able to move up and down the top of the dam here 
and maybe it's used to open up the doors but I would have thought they were on this big blue pulley systems <laughs> anyway fascinating and there's a road that goes along the ridge of this lake and there's a hill and there's quite a few little temples and a fantastic viewpoint I've been told so me and Dreamy the idea for today um, just enjoying the afternoon here at the dam is to just drive around and ha explore the nature because it's really quiet and peaceful over here and then in the afternoon I'll take you back into Konken city center for what is basically been my favorite thing about Konken every single day She's still leaking a little bit, unfortunately, but way less than she was. So I think that's because, you know, the metal piece that the mechanic was talking about, that isn't brand new, that isn't being replaced. He just spent a long time kind of using putty and the rubber seal and some sort of filler to try and fill the gap. But that piece needs replacing eventually. I mean, I don't really know what I'm doing, to be honest. I'm not a biker. I'm not an, you know, I'm not a motorhead person. I don't know anything about cars or bikes. I just seem to drive around Thailand on one. Please don't have a go at me in the comments. But I mean, the amount of people that tell me, change the bike, change the bike, what are you doing? Change the bike. No. <laughs> you know, just because, you know, let's say you have a girlfriend or a wife. She gets sick. You're just going to get rid of her. <laughs> or are you going to nurture her and keep her happy? and take care of her as much as possible so that one day when she does get better you know you can continue a healthy relationship together because god knows one day i'll get sick and dreamy will take care of me won't you see <laughs> lads seem to be doing some sort of landscaping work on it and they're playing the radio so it's not going to be a serene experience but we'll check it out nonetheless so there's this golden naga here and he's wrapping himself around this rock it's fantastic and then you can see the reclining Buddha. Gorgeous, isn't it? Underneath this prehistoric rock formation, apparently it's like a hundred million years old or something. And it seems to me that they're turning this into a bit of a site because some of this is real. This rock up here is real. But all of this decorative stuff here and this here, it's, it's all, I mean, I want to say plastic. I don't know, let's go feel it. I mean, it looks really cool, right? You know, they've done a good job, but... No, it's... It's made of concrete, but they've... You can tell it's not real, right? Surely. It's way too... I think with a few more years in the sun and a few rainy seasons, it might stain enough to blend in a bit more. But the reclining Buddha itself is absolutely gorgeous and it's really beautiful.
what a traffic jam in Isan looks like. Sorry, boys and girls. But this road's really nice. It just goes along the lake. And you see the little fishing villages and the farms. They grow rice here. They have lots of cattle, as you've just seen. It's a very scenic, beautiful part of Isan. Oh, I can see a man out in the distance fishing on a very, very traditional fishing equipment. Let me get that drone out and I'll get us a little bit closer because it's a fantastic piece of machinery. Just some wood and some netting and then they use counterweights. Even just the weight of the fishman himself is enough sometimes. And they'll lift the net out of the water and hopefully grab some fish. So let me explain, just with the use of the drone, what you're looking at here. So this guy's just fishing, doing his thing. He's got a fishing rod, no big deal. But out there on that platform is a fisherman again. But what he has created is a very typical fishing style here in Thailand where they create a net. Now the net is in between the four bamboo sticks that cross like a like an x okay so under the water in that square shape is a net and then that thing that's standing up next to him that is the counterweight now he can either pull it with a weight um, and it will lift the net out of the ocean or as i recently saw on flora and notes video where they were in patalung province they actually captured the even more traditional way where they don't use generators or counterweights they just use the human fisherman's weight himself where they walk up and down the bamboo and when they you know bring up the net they hope to catch a fish or two and so it's a very interesting and unique Thai style of fishing. I have never seen it in person myself. <laughs> Sorry. Can you hear these cows? Look at this little sausage dog. Get out of it. Get out of it. And um, look, just up here in this, uh, in this forest. Cattle. <laughs> just, just on the side of the road. And now they're making their way up through the, the forest. Up into the mountain. How very fun. Okay, so <laughs> wait till you see this. This was worth it because it was about a 35 minute or 45 minute drive across the ridge, you know, along the water's edge and up and around the other side. Sorry, I just need to concentrate a second. And you come around the backside, <laughs> the backside of the mountain, and you come through a national park and you have to pay. 100 baht and then you're in you can drive right to the to the start of the lookout point this is the lookout point here um, don't worry i'm going to show you the view let me just get my footing because it's quite dangerous and what can i see well i won't hold you any in suspense any longer apologies for the weather because it's just rolled in in the last few hours but have a look at this Absolutely epic. One eighty views. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Fantastic. So I'm gonna enjoy this for a little bit longer. Obviously I've just driven here for a long time. I'll sit here and just chill. But it's gonna be about an hour drive back to the Konken city centre. I'm staying in a hotel right next to one of the major sort of parks and lakes in the city centre and every single night I've been here, I mean I think I've been here four nights, four nights in Konken and the first two I just basically slept, I was so tired and exhausted from travelling around Isan for the past 
three weeks non-stop and you know you probably saw in the previous videos that I've been burning myself out and everything you know and so I just listened to my body and listened to you guys in the comments and I just did nothing for a few days because I, I wanted to do Con Ken justice because I, I, it's really cool and I really like it and what you'll see is the most incredible sunsets here in Con Ken on the lake especially next to my hotel so fingers crossed that this blows away or this isn't over in the city and you'll see you'll see what I'm talking about the fantastic sunsets in Con Ken Oh baby I love your madness it's so incredibly beautiful oh, you shine like gold so selfless to all and wild like an Okay, spectacular, spectacular stuff here in the city centre of Con Ken. There's actually a few more lakes just like this, some even bigger and more impressive, but this is the one that's just near my hotel and they've got that seven tiered incredible pagoda which they light up even in a cooler way at, at once it's actually gone dark and just like shrines and stuff as you walk around. Ah, Con Ken, I could live here, I really could. It's got that vibe, you know? It's got enough going on, good food, lots of markets. It's got the big shopping malls and an international airport and you can get to Bangkok pretty quickly. And there's a lot going on. And the people are really nice and the food's fantastic. And I've had a really good five days here. I'm sorry I didn't really show more, but like I said, I needed to recharge a little bit. And what else is going on next? I, I Actually, I'll wake up tomorrow and I'll make a decision. I might stay. <laughs> I might stay a little bit longer, um, I don't know. But Isan, this is a jewel. And thanks for watching. See you in the next one, in the next province. Or maybe again here in Konken, because I love it so much. <laughs>